Hello and welcome to another tutorial from PH Studios from the Advanced Techniques series. In this tutorial I'm going to cover the screen manager files I've just posted on the main website and then posted a few weeks ago on the forums and how to implement that in your game. If you've watched the paddles tutorial and have read the space shooter text tutorial you would have noticed that we jumped into a sort of screen manager right away on both of those complete games. So I discussed those in great detail on those tutorials so I will not do that in this one. But I will discuss them a little bit but I will not go into great detail. So if you go to the main website you will see the screen manager files on the main part and on the content list so we just click that we can download the files here so let's go ahead and do that we'll save that to our desktop let's open it and let's extract it and now these are just two class files that CS files so we'll need to go into the Visual Studio and let's create a new project File new project. It's going to be an Exodus Game Studio 3.0 Windows game. It's called Screen Implementation. And then that will generate the game1.cs. If we go to our open folder with these two in there, we can drag those in. But first, the nice way to keep it organized is to add a folder inside of the project. This is called Screen Manager. And every parent screen or file or class goes in this folder. And every implementation goes in a separate folder. Just to keep things organized. So we can drag and drop inside that folder. And we change the namespace to what our namespace is, which is a screen implementation. And then we go back and change the screen manager namespace to that. Alright, so now it should be good to go. Buzz F5. It succeeded. So now to implement this. In the game1.cs, we have a game device manager and a sprite batch. Underneath the sprite batch, create a screen manager object. And I just call it screen manager. And at the end of the constructor, we need to screen manager, we need to initialize it, and we need to pass it this, which this means this object, which is a game object. And then after that we need to do components dot add, and then we need to add the screen manager object, not the class. Then the initialize, we'll get to that later. And that should be it. Now if we press F5, things should work fine. Now, we have a game screen, which just basically does most of the core stuff for us. It transitions the screens on, transitions the screen off based on time. It says if it's a pop-up or not. And let's see. It's direction transition. It this will determine if it's transitioning on or off screen alpha if you want to fade it in or off you use that the screen state that's the enum enumerated type we are transitioning on it's active we are transitioning off the screen is hidden the screen is frozen and the screen is inactive those are all the screen states and we need the screen manager so we can get access to like the sprite batch and all that stuff. And then more stuff you can look at here. So those are the fields and properties. The initialization, these are just virtual methods. You override those when you want to load content or unload content. You don't have to override those. The update and draw. The initialize is just like the 
game1.cs if you want to initialize content in a specific method you just override the initialize method and use it that way the update is virtual and has code built into it but you can override it and perform dedicated update tasks for that screen only but this is just for every screen will be updated this way then the remove you can override this that way if you remove a screen you can override that on the screen implementation add a screen when you remove the screen so let's take the introduction screen which we'll cover in the next tutorial when an intro screen quits it loads the menu screen so we just override this remove method and then we add a screen to the screen manager before we remove and this is the transition the handle input you override that but if it's not active you cannot do input so that's where the coding comes in on the parent class then the draw it's an abstract and there is no uh, coding inside that on the parent and you have to override that since it's abstract All right now methods exit screen and freeze screen so you can just say this dot freeze screen and it'll freeze the screen so those are some of the methods that you have to play around with and the screen manager is similar you have a list of screens and a list of screens to update and the reason we do it this way is because if you remove a screen it'll throw an error because you're removing a screen from a list there you current have you're currently looping through so you make a copy of every screen inside the screens list and copy it to the screens to update then you do the screens to update you loop through that and whenever you want to remove a screen you remove it from the screens list that way you won't get errors thrown up at you and properties sprite batch initialization this is a derivative of drawable game components so you need the base and you need the base and you need to set whatever you want to do after that then we override load content we have a content manager then we have a sprite batch then we for each our current screens and we do load content in every screen unload content we do the same thing we loop through every screen inside the screens list and we unload the content in that screen update and draw these are pretty update is pretty complicated draw is pretty simple as I said we clear the screens to update and then we make a copy of every screen inside the screens and add to the screens to update now it's not really a copy, it's really a reference because you reference an object which means the screen you modify inside this list is the same screen that will be modified inside the screens. You're basically modifying the same object. So it's a reference, not a copy. And here's where you can add pause stuff you want to do here. Everything else is inside this else we keep on looping while the screens to update count is greater than zero and then we update every screen now the draw method will be